tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. Chef Ramsay is in Pasadena, California to help a struggling Jamaican restaurant. That is disgusting crap. It's an insult to Jamaica. Proud owner Dr. Una Morris runs her restaurant with an iron fist. I'm coming in because I don't like what's going on. Micromanaging every detail. This cannot be like this. Are you working on this? Get it out now. On top of that, her practices are completely bizarre. You're running a hospital kitchen full of bags. And she listens to no one, not even her son. I've been telling you since day one. Jamaican food cannot be cooked fresh every day. Jeff Ramsey is in for a battle. L let me finish. Let me finish my sentence first. That might be impossible to win. I would walk into your hospital and attempt to tell you your job. I, I am telling you. Gordon tries to give the doctor a prescription for success. I'm here to help you. You know, you don't understand what I'm going through. But she might just be too stubborn to accept it. You're in denial. I'm not in denial. Tonight <laughs> on Kitchen Nightmares. <laughs> Pasadena, California, home to the Kingston Cafe, an authentic Jamaican restaurant owned by Dr. Una Morris, who not only is a practicing radiologist, but is a three-time Olympian. All my life, I was able to accomplish the things I really wanted to do. And so I've started the restaurant because I really enjoy cooking, and there were no other Jamaican restaurant around. One the grill, jam, steak, medium rare. You know, my son is the manager, but we don't necessarily see things eye to eye. Keone, please be quiet. I'm talking. She doesn't really listen to my suggestions, and I've gotten to a point where no, I can't deal with this. Everything has to be cooked to order. That's, like the, that's you can't, so you can't cook everything yes, to order. Can. Impossible. Oh, Not here. here. She micromanages. She's focusing on small details like tablecloths being an inch off. It's not even. See, one side over there is long and the other. But the biggest focus should be why don't we have any more customers? I still see dusts. All of these have to change. See, you have to set standard. If you don't set standard, how you expect something to run well? These knife and forks are unacceptable. And I don't like how some of these look. You see? Sorry, Dr. Morris. Like everyone gets a bit nervous when she's around, even myself. Dad, yes. they need their food now. There are four people out there who haven't even gotten their second yet. Lots of cooks come in and out. They're there for one day, then you never see them again. Remember, the salt is one of the most important things. Not everybody can cook Jamaican food. We can't sell this. I don't like how it tastes at all. It's kind of hard for someone to expect you to do a job, and then they keep stepping in and not allowing you to do it. Mom, mom, you got you to gotta let him work. That's not going to happen. When she's in the kitchen, it slows things down. This cannot be like this. The planting is hanging over the edges. It creates a conflict when getting plates out, and then we have to deal with the customers who are not happy. Sorry about the we. It's cold. The restaurant's drowning, and we're all going down with it. If we don't get no customers, be lucky if you get five tables in all day. I oh, know, it's bad, isn't it? If it doesn't change soon, it's, it's going to die. I cannot sleep because I have so much debt, and my money from my retirement has almost dried up. Keone convinced me that Gordon Ramsay would help the restaurant. Something has to be done. Chef Ramsay is my last resort. After a phone call early this morning, Chef Ramsay decides to make a detour before heading to the restaurant. How are you, sir? I'm all right. Good to see you. Dr. Morris's son, Keone, has requested a meeting, and Chef Ramsay has obliged. How's it going? Um, difficult times. Really? For sure. Probably doing about 30% of what we were doing over the summer. Wow. What's the number one problem currently in the restaurant? What is it? I would say my mother's management. Really? Well, she's very much a micromanager and likes to roll with the iron fist. If I implement something, she would get angry and she would want to implement her version of way of doing things. Oh, dear. That's mixed messages. And more importantly, how confusing for not just the customers, but for the team. Exactly. Like, you have to realize, like, she came from Jamaica, essentially by herself. She's a physician in radiology. Okay, it's fantastic. Um, she's been to the Olympics. Olympics? She, yes. That is one disciplined woman. Right. So she's so, tough? Yeah, absolutely. How Nails. tough on a scale of 1 to 10? 35. Oh, jeez. Yeah. 
my mom. What she says goes, and it definitely does have a strain on the business. It looks like a, a residence. I would have driven right by it. Hey, mom. Th that's too small. That is too yeah. small. You can't sell. Okay, I'll get another one. Let's go. Let's go. That's hey, mom. too small. Can I take over in here no, for no, a no, second? No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Just one. I can hardly recognize. There's a restaurant out there. <laughs> it looks like a house on the outside. Yeah. It doesn't look like a restaurant. It's very homey. Uh, where are we yeah. going? We're going to the main dining room. Oh, OK, the main <laughs> dining room. Right. Yeah. It's a strange entrance. Hello. Dr. Morris. How are you? I'm really blessed seeing you. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. My name is Yuna, but everybody has called me Dr. Morris. Wow. You... OK. Doctor. Good to see you. What's that in there? That's curry goat. Excellent. Who made that? The chef, under the supervision of me. Wow. And are you always in the kitchen, or...? I, I do everything, just to make sure everything runs OK. Right. Yeah. Who's the head chef? That would be me. Young man. Hey, nice Good to meet you. you. And first name is? Daniel. The menu was designed by... Are oh, you doing the menu? Yes. Good to meet you all. Can't wait to taste it. Thank you. And here's Excellent. the lunch menu. Thank you very much. And your server will be right with you. Thank you. Wow. Bizarre menu. Like something out of an office filing cabinet. Hi there. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. How are you? Oh, very well, thank you. I'm Matthew. Great, great accent. Thank you. How long have you been here? Almost two years. I met Dr. Morris. Dr. Morris can be a little overbearing sometimes. It's just the way she wants everything to be perfect. Why do we have to call a doctor? Uh, that's just... She's Dr. Morris. But even in a restaurant? Yes. The doctor's office is next door. What, literally next door? Literally next door. What a headache. Oh, believe me. Well, I think she's really taken on too much. I personally think she's slowly but surely running herself into an early grave. We have salad that needs to take out yeah. now. It's for Matthew. It doesn't matter. It needs to be no, taken we're, out. No, we're taking it right now. So I'll go for the uh, Jamaican patties. One veg mm -hmm. and one beef. Mm -hmm. Got to, got to, got to have the hot flashes. OK, yeah. so... Which is your jerk chicken, right? That's our signature dish, yes. It looks like you're having some hot flashes. You all right? <laughs> yeah. It's hot in here. Is it? Yeah. Plus, it's wearing this get-up as well. I mean, I feel like I'm at a funeral sometimes when I come to work. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Famous jerk chicken married in secret jerk sauce. What's the secret behind it? Uh, the owner of the restaurant makes the sauce. Really? The owner pretty much does everything. I'm not even sure the cooks even make the sauce. Seriously? The chef doesn't even know the secret behind the sauce? No. Uh, ooh la la. I've just spotted, mind you, twenty dollars. That can't be right. Well, it must be a phenomenal oxtail at twenty dollars. Yeah, it's good. Let's have that as well. Okay. Excellent. Now Thank stop you. sweating. Yeah. And relax. Hot. Okay, let's see what we got, guys. Two Jamaican patties, uh, one beef, one veggie, jerk chicken, and one oxtail. Okay, let's go, you guys. We yeah. need to get the Jamaican patties first, please. Yes, Dr. Morris. Everything's soulless. It's. It's lacking charm, and it's like eating inside of a, an office block. Not good. T tell them let's go. They're, they're going. They can't go any faster. Do you have the jerk sauce? Sending out right now. Dan. Yes, Dr. Morris. We need the next plate. Are you working on this? Yes, Dr. Morris. OK. Beef patty? Yep. With a little, little bit of mild jerk sauce there. And this is the veggie patty. OK, I'll leave you to enjoy those. Thank you. Absolutely gross. That sauce is dreadful. The pastry's raw. A soggy pile of dough. They would fucking kidnap me if I served that in Jamaica right now. How are the patties? Um, the sauce is dreadful. I don't like it myself. It's like a gloop. The sad news about the pate, the pastry's undercooked. It's hideous, hideous. Let me get rid of these for you. And this one is? The jerk chicken hot flashes. Is that the same sauce? Yes. Take that away, please, honey. Take this away, you yes, got please. it. Thank you. Look at my rice. It looks like a silicon implant. Perfectly formed. Ugh. Guys, do not put any more jerk sauce on his plate. He hates it. Ooh, nasty. Not an ounce of seasoning there. Cold. How's our signature dish? Bland as fuck. Cold chicken. Disgusting overcooked rice, and when was that chicken cooked? I couldn't tell you, to be honest with you. Go and ask Doctor. This is dry as hell. Will do. Thank you. When was the chicken made, Doctor Warren? What, you, you didn't like it? No, it's sort of dry. You know why? Jerk chicken is dry in Jamaica. It's supposed to be dry. 
He doesn't eat Jamaican food every day. I eat it every day. So I don't know what he knows of jerk chicken. This is our oxtail stewed in lima beans. Yeah. Cartilage everywhere. What a mess. $20. How's the uh, oxtail? Sadly, nothing's been trimmed, so it's full of fat. Bland. And the temperature, I mean, everything across the board here was sort of barely lukewarm. OK, let me get rid of that for you. What an embarrassment. It sucks, man. Like, I've, I've made points about this, like... Everything they said, you've already said before, huh? Yeah. I'm just glad that I was right. <laughs> you know? You're on the right side. <laughs> exactly. OK. <laughs> Doctor, I would like a word with you. I'm not afraid of Chef Ramsay. I'd like to talk to you and Kieran. Even if he had horns, I wouldn't be afraid of him. OK. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I walk in a dining room that felt cold and just flat. When the food arrived, soulless. Everything was horrendous. Barely lukewarm, dry and tasteless. It's an insult to Jamaica. The patties, the actual pastry on the side was raw. As for the jerk sauce, disgusting. I'm going to say this. Um, from the get-go, I always thought that everything should be fresh, cooked to order. Okay, Keone, Keone, could you be quiet? He's talking. <laughs> OK, let's move on, shall we? I've got bigger issues. Honestly, hot flashes? Isn't that a system of menopause? You not, can... Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It depends on how you perceive it. Forget the strange name. That dreadful jerk chicken Dry? Just a minute. Let me set you straight. Most jerk chicken in Jamaica are dry. In That's Jamaica, right. as a matter of fact, dry I, let me finish. I feel that the jerk chicken that we do are more moist than the one they do in right. Jamaica. Now, let me tell you something also. L let me finish. Let me finish my sentence first. Mostly dry, I can accept. Dry and edible, I can't. I'm ready for an argument because I am not going to sit here and kiss your ass for trying to tell me that is a Jamaican jerk chicken. I'm You're trying you. to lecture no, me. No, 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 I'm not trying to lecture you. I wouldn't I'm walk into your you. hospital and attempt I, to tell you your job. I, I am telling you. I don't know what kind of herb from Jamaica you've been smoking, but that is Did disgusting you? crap. Coming up, why are you so stubborn? Chef Ramsay takes on a doctor in denial. I'm not in denial. Well, you don't understand what I'm going through. And a kitchen that is ready for emergency surgery. What's the addiction to bags? Can Chef Ramsay bring this patient back to life? I so want you to succeed. Not serving food like that, you don't. Or is Kingston Cafe dead on arrival? You've lost the plot. I'm not crazy. I'm out of here. That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. Chef Ramsay came to this Jamaican restaurant hoping to find food rich in flavor, but instead it was bland as fuck. Not surprisingly, he had a heated discussion with the owner. Most jerk chicken in Jamaica are dry. Let me tell you something also. L let me finish. Let me finish my sentence first. That is disgusting crap. Still with a bad taste in his mouth, Chef Ramsay returns to Kingston Cafe to see how it operates in a dinner service. Where does the food um, serve from? The window? It's right there. That's the window there. You're kidding me. Try to work with what we got. Jesus Christ. Exactly. Stuff, jerk, coconut rum, shrimp. As the first orders come into the kitchen. OK, let's go, you guys. Let's go. Kingston Cafe's complimentary salads get sent out to the diners. Folks, your first course comes with every meal. It's yeah. difficult to eat out of this glass. The salad I ordered, is it going to be like similar to this? It's going to be a little similar. It is. Can I change my order? Sure. What the fuck is that in the martini glass? The salad. Salad? Daniel. Yes. Who put the salad in the martini glass? Is there a doctor in the house? How many glasses? There's trays in the corner there that yeah. they take. Oh, my god. You are kidding me. Jesus Christ. Who's doing all this? Oh, my good god. Um, Gordon, if you continue like that, Jesus Christ actually gonna appear. I hope so, because I think that's what's needed right now. Dressing a salad takes seconds. Tell me what's wrong with that. It gets soggy and it's Thank nasty. You. Turn around and tell the owner. It's soggy and it's nasty. 
it doesn't mean that it's really bad because he's never seen something like this before. I want you to dress in the salad in a bowl. Okay. Okay. Even though he was just planning on observing, Chef Ramsay can't control himself and institutes his first change. We've got fresh salads dressed to order and in a bowl. Well done. Yeah. Excellent. But Dr. Morris... Make sure it is warm. ...is still the woman in charge. Can we give a better piece of chicken? I don't like a lot of Micromanaging whenever and wherever possible. Is that warm? It tastes like hot water. This is no. not Jamaican. There's no taste. Can I have another piece of chicken? I don't like this. You don't like this? OK. They didn't oh, like this. We'll say that. The two old people right here. If they're not Jamaican, they're not going to like it. Dr. Morris doesn't really like to hear a lot of complaints about the food. She does what she knows and wants to do. What is that there? Chicken breast. Daniel. Yes. When was that cooked? Yeah. That was cooked yesterday. Jesus Christ. Doctor. Yes. I can't believe we're doing this. That was cooked last night. It looks like a giraffe's tongue. OK. It makes me feel validated, I guess, that the points that I've been making for months are the points that he's making now. Do you have a dog at home? Don't feed them that. Keone, just come over here. OK. Now, Keone, he's really getting me very upset. Suppose I punch him out. Because let me finish. He's right around. Let me finish, Keone. All he did, um, Keone, please know. be quiet. First of all, he wants us to cook everything fresh. Why can't you do that? You can't. Yes, you can. Jamaican food cannot be cooked fresh every day. Do you understand that? Mom, we'll finish this later. Oh. What is that there? Oh, my god. You are kidding me. Bags everywhere. Christ almighty. Oh, please. What's that in the microwave? Rice. When was that cooked? Four days Rice. ago. When I first worked here, I was like, oh, no. Really? Bags? Come on. What's the addiction to bags? Is it a medical thing, like donating blood in bags? Or, uh, everything we've got is, like, in bags. Where do you want to put it then? If you're now going to tell me that rice stays better in a bag inside the steamer, madam, I'm really sorry, but you've lost the plot. I don't like when you disrespect me. So if you can tell me where you think I've disrespected you. You told me that I was crazy upstairs. I'm, I'll tell you why. The practices and how you're running a restaurant is packed with stupidity. I didn't say that you are demented. Didn't say anything like that at all. No. You, you specifically okay. say like this. You're... That's what you okay. said to me. Right. Did you now, hear what I said? Let me finish. If I say that to you, how yes. would you feel? I'm not a delicate, dainty flower. It's going to take everything you say personally. But let me tell you something. The practices are ludicrous. Can I just show you something? Ready? No answer. Just, just feel that. It's frozen. It couldn't be frozen. Well, OK. OK. It should, not, it, sh it should not be frozen. Okay. Well, it is frozen. No, no, no. No, don't tell me. OK. No, OK, let me, let me, another show. No, I've got to finish my sentence. Frozen, solid, disgusting, overcooked chicken. You're resisting it. That's fine. No, no, no. I'm trying to say it should not be frozen. They did it right. yesterday. I understand. OK. But I've just told you it is. Right now, you're running a hospital kitchen full of bags. Fuck that. I'm out of here. He may say I'm crazy, but certain things he says about Jamaican food, I disagree with him. So I'm not crazy. I think the doctor needs a doctor. <laughs> Who put the salad in a martini glass? After a very revealing dinner service, you're running a hospital kitchen full of bags. Chef Ramsay knows that Kingston Cafe will never overcome its problems unless Dr. Morris realizes she is causing the sickness, not the cure. So mission number one this morning is a quick visit to the doctor's office, located right next door to the restaurant. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Do you mind if I come in? Come on in. When Chef Ramsey came to my office, I was surprised because I did not expect him to come back. OK, you're so smart, but you're unaware of the dramatic change that's needed to reposition this business. Why are you so stubborn? I'm not stubborn. The practices you thought were correct last night are backwards. You're in denial. Well, 
Um, I'm not in denial, because I, I'm not in denial. I'm not here to fight you. Well... I'm here to help you. OK. Just help me understand where you are financially. What have you put into that restaurant in the last three years? Probably over $300,000. You know, I've just been using my credit card. I borrowed money to just to maintain the restaurant. So how much longer can you continue along these lines? Probably a month, but that doesn't mean I'm going to quit. Well, you may not have a choice. Does your team, does your son, does your management understand? My, OK, my son doesn't tell you the honest truth. My son, he's only telling you what he thinks well, you want to hear. I appreciate you telling me. He doesn't tell you that he's not dependable and doesn't show up. Really? No, he doesn't. You don't understand. Well, I won't understand unless you tell me. You know, you don't understand what I'm going through. You ask him to do anything, he argues. If I say A, he argues about B. Do you know how I'm hurt that I have my kids who I have sacrificed my life for and they don't follow through on things that they need to do and I have to be doing everything? Well, this is a huge amount of pressure on one pair of shoulders. Isn't Keone worried about you in terms of... I don't think he does. I think the servers worry about me more than my son does. And you know what hurts me is because my mom died when I was 10. And I didn't have a mom when I grew up. And I just grew up and be determined to be somebody when I grew up. And you are. And you did it. And you accomplished it. Former Olympian, radiologist, doctor, come on. Don't let the negativity in the restaurant destroy your self-esteem. No wonder you're agitated. No wonder you're deeply concerned. The pressure on your shoulders is ridiculous. And you've done everything before this restaurant right in your life. You've got every right to continue with that self-esteem. And you're not going to be dragged down by that restaurant. This may be the first time in your life, Doctor, that you need help. And I'm here to do that for you. OK? I appreciate that. Let's not clash. I'm here to help. OK. OK? I appreciate that. Good. And I'm sorry. I appreciate your honesty. Don't be sorry. Come on. Come here. Come here. Come on. I really feel like I can trust him now, and that really means a lot to me. Because I'm, I'm not used to asking for help. <laughs> Yuna's in pain. She's desperate, and she's got so much riding on her shoulders. The big question for me is, how committed is her son to helping his mum? Kioni. Yeah. I'm going to get straight to the point. What do you want out of this restaurant? And how much are you committed to helping it turn around? If you would have met me when the restaurant first opened, it would have been a completely different vibe. In you what know? way? I mean, like, I was really passionate about this thing. I really was. I was like, look, Mom, this is a viable business. And I pushed so hard for it. And I wanted her to see that I was right. But she doesn't want to approach the business in a way that'll make it work. You seem to be in competition with your mother. It's, it's the nature of our relationship. Are you aware of the financial mess that your mother's in? She won't tell me. This and place is days away from closing. She has horrendous credit card bills. Right. Her retirement's in jeopardy. And let me tell you something. The most important lady in my life is my mother. Right. And what she's done for me has been extraordinary. Hasn't your mum done more than you could ever imagine? Absolutely. And that's coming from a lady that had no mum. So drop the bravado and focus on your family, because if this restaurant goes down, you're going down with it. Got it? All right. Thank you. He's definitely right, and I know that she needs help. Love my mother to death, and I'm not leaving, you know, her to handle this by herself. After important breakthrough conversations with Yuna and Keone... Oh, my gosh! Chef Ramsay looks to energize the restaurant and improve the quality of the food. So tonight's dinner service will feature a barbecue on the patio 
with Keone at the helm. That's what you'll be wearing later. Don't dirty it. All right. I want everyone in the neighborhood lifting their windows up and, mm, wow, where's that smell coming from? By running a delicious barbecue outside, Chef Ramsay wants Yuna to realize the merits of serving Jamaican food that is not only completely fresh, but rich in flavor. So the restaurant's running in the restaurant, and the barbecue's taking place on the patio. Yeah. Any questions? No, Chef. OK. Jump in, have a little taste. Wow, that looks amazing. It smells good out here. The chicken is good. That means a lot coming from you. <laughs> it is. I like the chicken. It's different, but it was good. I would give him a B plus. But I'm worried because people come in like the other one also. So you don't want to change too much. OK, you excited? Yeah, yes. very yes. much. Yes. Good. Let's go, because we're opening in half an hour. Coming up, will the new barbecue be the answer to Kingston Cafe's problems? Fucking hell. Will the kitchen survive dinner service? I so want you to succeed. Not serving food like that, you don't. And can a mother and son find a way to work together? You like to argue too This much. isn't an argument. These questions all get answered. Oh, gosh. When Kitchen Nightmares continues. As the doors open for dinner, customers are offered the regular menu in the dining room or the special barbecue menu served on the patio. At any time, you can just go up and start serving yourself. Roasted corn with chili lime butter. The colors and the smells, everything was vibrant and exciting. That looks so good. It's pretty phenomenal. It's a really good idea, though. While Keone oversees the barbecue, which is already generating excitement. I need shrimp. They're defrosting right now. Head chef Daniel and the kitchen staff are unfortunately stuck in their same old habits. What in the fuck is that? Cups and bags, cups and bags. I thought the only thing that went in bags were bodies. I hate those bags. Ugh. Ugh. Gross. So where's the fresh rice for tonight? We're using the same rice that we made yesterday. Oh, no. Fucking hell. I'm extremely frustrated. I wanted to make fresh beans and rice today. It was not the decision Dr. Morris wanted to make. We've got no fresh rice on there. OK. And apparently, doctor's orders are use the old rice in the bag. I I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah. Hope they get our food out soon. In spite of the frequent use of the microwave. Guys, it's been 20 minutes on an order of Rudy shrimp. We're just waiting for it. The kitchen struggles to get food out to their customers. I could have grown a beard by the time they bring my meal. <laughs> in the dining room, the, the atmosphere was a little, like, down, where the food kept taking so long. People just weren't generally happy, whereas when I poked my head outside to the patio, people were laughing, they were having fun. It was almost like two different restaurants tonight. That is good. That was really good, uh, really good chicken. Jerry, great news. Look how popular the barbecue's becoming. Right. And that smell, mmm, nice. Makes you feel like you're back in Jamaica. Huh? <laughs> From Jamaica to depressing. After what seemed like an eternity, customers in the dining room are finally receiving their food. <laughs> but it doesn't appear to be worth the wait. The fish is really dry. I think mm -hmm. it may be overcooked. Overcooked? OK, I'll let them know right now. What's wrong with that? They said it's too dry and overcooked. It's just gone out. Daniel. What? She just wants to try something else. What? Jeez, recommend the barbecue. We got a stunning piece of salmon out there, cooked perfectly. You want to try that? Go and get it now, quickly. Okay. Dry and overcooked. Is that still the? Is that the frozen stuff? Yes, that's the frozen stuff. It's rubbery. She's absolutely right. Thoroughly frustrated, Chef Ramsay jumps into action and puts together an entree of barbecue salmon. Let's hope she enjoys. All right. Can't believe we're serving barbecue food in the dining room. There we are. Chef Ramsay plated it for you. Oh my God. So there you are. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Barbecue. Oh my god. Next time, patio. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah, thank you. Do you know? Please. The smell. Yeah, it's beautiful. Fresh barbecue. And the verse out here is wonderful. It's beautiful. I really appreciate good. it. Good, good, thank good, good. You. Change is not easy, you know, but I was really impressed with how many people enjoy the barbecue tonight. So I'm willing to allow him to tell me how I can make it better. OK, tonight was a tale of two restaurants. Una, let's hear from the boss. Everybody out in the patio were very pleased. Inside, that was different. Inside, everything was bad. Yeah, you're right. We did confirm the barbecue worked, clearly. Tonight, we added something. But we might have to take something away, because it's been bugging me from the first minute I walked in here. Hang on a second, yeah? Irritating. Bloody hell. What is it? Does anybody know? Could it be? 
what, what the fuck is going on. Oh, gosh. Fed up with the amount of food that is being reheated. Oh, my God. You are kidding me. Chef Ramsay... I have to take something away. Hang on a second, yeah? ...is determined to get rid of this damaging practice. There's more plastic here than in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Say goodbye to your bags. Looking at all that food, the first thing that comes to me was dollars. Yuna. Yes? I want you to succeed. Tonight, it stops. We get rid of the bags. We have a simple practice of cooking raw ingredients on the day and serving them. Trust me, if we don't make major changes on relaunching this restaurant, we don't stand a hope in hell. Good night. See you in the morning. Good night, Chef. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. It was kind of hard to take. I think it's really going to work out, Dr. Morris. But he's, he wants me to trust him, so I'm going to do that. With Dr. Morris seemingly on board, Chef Ramsay and his team spend the next nine overnight hours bringing the Caribbean spirit into Kingston Cafe. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Here on this very patio, we had a taste of success, right? Yeah. Yep. Now the idea is to get that success in through there. Ready? Yeah. Yep. Let's go. In we go. Straight through. Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, my God! Jump in, jump in, jump in! Wow! Holy Toledo! Wow, look at that! Una, how do you feel? This is fantastic! Chef Ramsay transformed this entire room into the Caribbean. Let's start with the Caribbean blue. We removed the artwork from the walls and got that cabana effect, that Caribbean feel, yes? Oh, my God! I feel like I'm at the beach. You know, all I need now is a nice cocktail in my hand and it'll be a great day. Oh, my God! Una, if you say, oh, my God, any more times, trust me, he will appear. <laughs> the first thing you said to me when I arrived, good God! If you continue like that, Jesus Christ actually gonna appear. <laughs> oh, my God! Have a look at the tabletops. Gone is that white linen. It's a casual, exciting, fun, inviting dining room. We've got some really nice woven steel placemats and beautiful china. And look what's on every table. Yahoo! It's Jamaican yeah. jerk sauce. That's brilliant. Oh, oh I'm so wow. Happy. I know it. Oh, um, thank you. Now, it's pretty phenomenal. I'm completely happy for my mother. You know, that's the biggest thing. Along with the new decor, Chef Ramsay has replaced the tasteless, uninspiring old menu, and in its place, a tasty, fresh menu that celebrates Caribbean cuisine. Please take a look at the Kingston Cafe. Oh, my God! New dishes. That is so beautiful. Just have a look at the vibrant colors first off. Yes, it's really beautiful. More importantly, it's fresh. A taste of Jamaican platy for everything on there you could wish for in a Jamaican restaurant, yeah? The patties are phenomenal. The Kingston Special Barbecue, that will be done from outside. Barbecue chicken, kingfish, and a tamarind marinated skirt steak. It's beautiful. It looks good, right? Yes. yes. So are you going to look good? Because we're going to have a little fun with these. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Woo! Yes. Yay. Look at that. <laughs> And Matt, when you swept in black, we won't see it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes? Yes. Now, hold that. Pass them along. We've got your names in there. This shirt's definitely more casual feel than the white shirt and tie, and I really think this has got to go. Start tasting. That fish is perfect. Uh -huh. Yeah. It really is. This is the best Jamaican food I've ever had. This is actually probably the best food full stop I've ever had. I love it. Mm -hmm. Taste this. Chef Ramsay so has opened so many avenues for me that I could never, ever repay him for his kindness. One more little surprise come through. When I first arrived driving by, I missed the place. It wasn't clear enough. Time to make a statement to Pasadena. Ready? Oh, yeah! Look at that! Look at 
than that. Oh, wow. it's beautiful. You can see it from miles away. Yes, that's true. Okay. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, it was really exciting seeing a new sign that was so visible and colorful. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> wow. it so much. Now, there's no way that anybody cannot see the sign. Let's make this service an amazing service, yes? OK. With Chef Ramsay's vision complete, it's time to relaunch this Pasadena restaurant. How are you guys today? Good yes. Welcome to the new and improved Kingston Cafe. As you can see, we've got the new menus down. I'll go with the jerk chicken, the barbecue. We're going to do a taste of the Jamaica. All right, here we go. All right, you guys, we've got a tasty Jamaican platter, barbecued uh, jerk chicken, barbecued tamara skirt steak. May I have some chips, please? Only minutes into dinner service. Kimani, appetizer platter. Appetizers are leaving the kitchen at a steady pace. Tuna ceviche and lobster fritters are going to come. It's really good. And more importantly, customers are thrilled with what they are receiving. That is so good, isn't it? But the real pressure is about to hit. We're getting backed up on tickets. Jesus Christ. And head chef Daniel is already a little flustered. Come K13. on, guys. K13. K13? They already got their food. K13 already got their food. Oh, no. K13 has already had their food. Why are we sending food twice? Who's organizing this? It is me. I need one person to start taking control. Yes, yes. I beg you. Yes. What table's going next, please? That is for P4. So P4, good. P4. So let's, let's all sing off the same page. Yes. And we send P4 together. Yes. I was mixing up some orders, sending things to the wrong tables. And that's, that's unexcusable. Let's do the red snapper. I've got that. Here. The Bilka red snapper. These are the lobster. OK. Oh, no. It's black as hell. Why? It overcooked. No, no, I'm sorry, look at, Chef. Look at me. Just tell me why, so I can help you. I, let me. I wait. so want you to succeed. So do I, Chef. Not I'm serving sorry. food like that, you don't. It's relaunch night at the Kingston Cafe, and after a promising start. Oh no! Head chef Daniel has lost his composure. Jesus Christ! And his standards. It's black as hell. Things just weren't going the way we thought they would. It overcooked. And you gave it to the girl to send. I let me redo it. That table over there, they were seated after us, and they've already eaten. The food wasn't coming out on time, and it made us look bad. It was going downhill fast. Guys, I'm sorry about this, guys. I can assure you it is coming out. OK, Keon, what about the people been here for an hour? Mom, what can we do? Just two seconds, look, two seconds. Come here. I need someone getting a grip of this now and fucking waking them up, because we're going to make ourselves look stupid. Right. Yeah, Dan's got to step over the plate. Yeah. And you need to get them together a little bit, yeah? Rally right. them round, yeah? All right. Yeah, we're sinking and we're falling behind. All right. Dan, please, just make sure that anything that you're doing, you're doing two up or three up because I we're falling it. apart. Keone's your man. Exactly. You're the ace. Yes, Off yes. the same fucking page. Yes, chef. This is what I need you guys to start doing. Get yeah. bowls of chips, and we're going to start giving them to the table so they can munch on them while they're waiting on the food, OK? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody gets chips. Here's a little chips to hold you over. This is really good. Mm. Hey, guys, there's also dessert that's floating around. OK, so make somebody else do it. Mom, mom. Give me the ticket. I take it in the back and get no, it done. No, mom, no. You're not knowing what's going on, Mom. Mm. I definitely want my mom to understand I can make this thing work. Walk around, talk to the guests. You're more important than I can't than talk to them no, because no, there's no, no, no food. No, 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 you can't, Mom. You can't want to argue with you. You like to argue too this much. This isn't an argument. OK, what number is this, K7? Seven, mom, 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 stand away from this area. You can't help, Mom, not right now. I need two seconds with you, please. The shrimp, um, came back right now. Got to let him do it. Okay. Got to let Keone do it. He's trying. Thank you. Yeah, he's showing that level of commitment. Let him do it. Okay. Smooth the dying room, OK? 30 seconds bobbing around each little table. Wow. OK, let him do it. Let him find his voice. I just want to finish this order right here, guys. It's going too slow, Dan. Yeah, I understand that. If you can put more shrimp in there than that, right? No, I can't. I see you. You can at least fit one more in there. This is almost an hour on this ticket. There you go. Keone's leadership has helped stabilize the kitchen. Can you work on four beef patties and two jerk wings? allowing customers to finally get a taste of the new Kingston Cafe. Oh, oh, that looks amazing. Oh, my God. Wow, beautiful. I have the prettiest nice. plate. I need uh, another coconut rum shrimp. Finally. I would definitely come back just for this. We just need to finish this. How is everybody doing? We love it. We're enjoying just that on that. Good. I really appreciate that. I guarantee to you, it we're going to be so much faster and better, OK? The fact that I have opened up 
and is committed to keep his menu, that's a big thing for me. Well, let me tell you, I grew up on patties in Jamaica, in Kingston. That squash patty was absolutely amazing. It took me back to my childhood days. Really? Yes. yes thank you, guys. Thank you. Great. All right, guys, dinner service is over. Yeah, great. OK, what a night, yeah? But we had a buzz out there on the patio and a buzz in the dining room, right? The customers clearly loved the food. That's good. Clearly, we did have a problem. But there was one person that did step up and helped in a big way to turn things around. Kioni. Thank you. Well done, boss. Yes. Thank you. Good job. Tonight, Kioni really stepped up to the plate. I'm so proud of them. He did a fantastic job. To all of you, cook your hearts out and serve with a smile. <laughs> Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you, Chef. Thank you, Gordon. Oh, no, can I just have a little word with you through there? Yes? Thank you. It's been a gigantic step forward, and we are only going to get better. Now, Keone, he proved he's capable. Oh, yeah? I know he is. Very intelligent young man. I know, but you have a tough decision in front. If you're going to make him part of the business, then commit to doing that. Okay. Either you make him feel like a partner in the business, or you let him go. You cut the apron strings, one or the other, OK? OK. Your decision. OK. Now, there's one more thing. Do you fancy a race? Oh, you want to run? Yeah. OK, come. Now I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Oh, <laughs> dogs. God bless you. Initially, I didn't like Chef Ramsay. I'm telling I'm you. Trying to let you now, me. Let me finish. But now I realize yes. that he has a Good wonderful night. heart. He's going to be so proud of us when he comes back. <sighs> What a week. My goodness me. I only hope that this Olympian, Dr. Mother, can now add successful restaurateur to her resume. Why? Because she deserves it. Big time. Let me finish. Let me finish. Shortly after Chef Ramsay's departure, Yuna decided to encourage Keone to concentrate on his education and step back from the restaurant. And, you know, I'll always love you. Don't care you and I fight, and I, you know? Of course. Yuna, however, is more dedicated than ever. She is committed to cooking fresh, collaborating with her staff, and maintaining the standards Chef Ramsay put in place. Please enjoy it. As long as I follow what Coach Ramsay explained to me what we need to do. It has to look good, and it has to taste good. The future of Kingston Cafe looks great. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon Ramsay is in Southern California, where a sibling rivalry threatens a legacy that spans four decades. It's a battle every day. They can't work together. It's a fire. While Sister Celine may be too aggressive. Martin, you heard me right. Her brother Alex seems to be too laid back. You don't give a shit. As for the chef, he is completely fed up. I'm burning out. I'm burning. I'm burning. I'm burning. I'm and everyone in the family is suffering. Every day is a fight. I can't keep going. Now Chef Ramsay must break through the jealousy. Are you pissed that she's come to run the business? She shouldn't even be here. The anger. This is going to fuck up everything. And the resistance. They've just sort of given up. Have you given up? So he can fix this fractured restaurant. This is much, much worse than I could ever imagine before it tears this family apart. This is destroying us. That's tonight. He's going to hate me even more for this. On a very emotional Kitchen Nightmares. I don't even think that anyone knows how much I care. Ventura Boulevard one of LA's top destinations for shopping and dining. On this famed street is a landmark restaurant called La Frite, a bistro owned by French immigrant Andre Remillion. La Frite opened in 1972. We were the only French restaurant on the boulevard. Right this way. It was always busy, even at 12 o'clock at midnight, we were packed. 
After years of success, Andre's son Alex was eager to join his father at La Frite. I was looking forward to my dad and myself making this restaurant work for the next 15, 20, 30 years. But two years ago, Andre's daughter Celine decided she also wanted in on the family business. Alex, do you care this going out like this, the soupy? You're the boss. I know my brother's not happy that I'm here. I know he wishes that he could, could just keep going the way he was going. I think that this restaurant has so much more potential than it's already had. And I really felt like it could really make a difference here. You haven't eaten much. I could make this at home, not in a good way. The food is mediocre at best. What do you need? I've been cooking at La Frite for about 19 years. I'm responsible 100% for everything that's in the kitchen. I don't think the menu is, uh, is, there is nothing wrong with it. Onion soup is bitter. Onion soup is bitter? Martin is a Napoleon complex. Just give me the number table. He's a little man with a big mouth. Ah. I've watched the food just slowly kind of go down and down and down. Souffle is coming back to Eggy. Yeah. I've made my comments. I can't tell anybody anything. Um, Alex? Just. I either get argued with or I get told no. Oh, good old Selena. Wow. Alex, he's a little lackadaisical sometimes. <laughs> he resents Selena. I'm not the manager tonight. He feels slighted. He feels shunned. My brother and I used to get along really, really well, and we were very close. But the restaurants hurt our relationship pretty bad. I don't hate Alex. He hates you. I know he does. It's really difficult for me because I'm the one who has to be the, the buffer for both of them, and I wish sometimes they can understand each other. It's so quiet in here. The numbers just cut down to a third of what we were doing before. Now we are dead by 9 o'clock. Hey, we only did about 20 covers tonight. It's going to be tough. I need Chef Ramsey to come in because someone needs to say, hey, look, this is what's affecting your business. Yeah, it's slowing down, but why do we need to change things when it has been working for such and such amount of years? We're losing money, and uh, it's time for my kids to take over. And if they can't work together, just have to close the door. Before Chef Ramsay makes the six-mile drive from his LA restaurant to the freight, owner Andre Ramillion is anxious to meet with him privately. How are you today? All right. I'm Welcome to Gordon for Ramsay. Chef uh, Ramsay. To give Chef Ramsay a quick briefing into the problems of his restaurant. Excuse me two seconds. Hi. Chef Hi. Ramsay? How are you? Hi, my name is Andre. Andre, good to see you. I want to talk to you about the problem I okay. have with my business. Uh, first of all, in terms of the business, it's been there for how long? The business has been over there for 38 years. Wow. It's been good to me until you... recently I'm starting to back up and I want my daughter, my son to take over. Oh, so you're passing it to them? I'm trying to. And who are they? Alex. Alex. is my boy. Okay. The older one and selling a sister. So what is the number one problem with the restaurants? I think it's mostly the communication right. between my daughter, my son, but they somehow it's a big clash. Celine went and tried on her own business and didn't really work out. So she came back and worked for me. When she came back, Alex didn't nice. want Celine to come back because he right. saw the he owned the place. They, they never really work together. And it's really difficult to, to find a solution. It's getting to a point where I can really handle the conflict of personality, and I hope Chef Renzi can help. Thank you for coming okay. over. It would yeah. be great. Okay. Thank you. Secretary back. Nice to meet you. See you shortly. OK. Thank you. Hello. How are you? I'm great. How nice to you? see you. And Bye. first name is? Gail. I'm the manager. OK, great. How long have you been here? 20 years. 20 years here. 20 years. Wow, wow, wow. What's that monstrosity in the middle there? That's yeah. our dessert case. It's what? Your dessert case? Is there a problem with the kitchen, or does it always stay here? It's been here for 20 years that I know of. So it came when you came? Wow. What is this? That's our dessert tray. Holy crap. Did someone drop it? They could have. <laughs> How long has that brick been sat there? That's our homemade bread pudding. That's been there, I think, longer than you've been yeah, here. Huh? Well, they, yeah, you're right. Yeah, OK. 
Yeah. Chef Ramsay's right about the dessert case. I think it should be out of here. Right, where would you like me to sit, here? Yes, sir. I've been trying to get it out ever since I've been here. Can you hear the noise of that thing in the motor? Yes. Who I wants to come know. out to a restaurant and sit next to a fridge? Constant buzz. Um, is Andre around? Would you like to see Andre? Uh, yes, please, yeah. OK. Thank you. Good nice to see you. Meeting. Likewise, good to see you too. Mm -hmm. Dessert fridge is a disaster. Andre? Yes? Chef Ramsay would like to see you. Yeah. The colour's ghastly. Garland, how are you? How are you? Hi. Right. Yeah, good to see you again. My Hi. daughter. How are you? I'm Celine. Nice Celine, nice good to, to see you. you. Likewise. She's going to take care of you. Do? Okay, brilliant. Gordon coming here was pretty much my idea. You're going to look at the menu for a minute? Absolutely, definitely. I'll be right back. Thank you, Celine. Because it's really become a big pointing finger match of it's so and so's fault. Oh, it's so and so's fault. But nobody's taking responsibility for the problem. I'm back. Do you have any questions for right now? Um, what quiche would you recommend? I prefer the Lorraine. That's something we're known for. Let's do the Lorraine. The Lorraine. And then I'll start with fruit salad and then the seafood crepe. Not a problem. Thank you. Guys, this table that's coming in right now is for Gordon. Seafood crepe. I'll take the Lafrit salad to him. Chef Renzi would like the food because all my food is good. How much dressing would you like? The usual amount, thanks. I'm going about three quarters to start. And inside the salad, we've got romaine. Inside the salad is the romaine, the, um, the walnuts, and you've got your blue cheese as well. And that's one portion. It's massive. Salads are large, and it's usually good as an entree. Enjoy. Thank you. Wow. Bland. The vinegar dressing is so beautiful. The um, vinegar dressing is so strong, just overpowering. Are you through with the salad? Uh, yeah, I am. Can yeah, I clear that's it. So acidic. Yep. I already know. Did you mention to the chef? Yeah. I, no one listens to me. You knew it was wrong. You told them, but no one's listening to you. Sorry, my life. But why is that? <laughs> Martin doesn't listen to me, and he has an issue taking anything from a female. There's a okay. chauvinistic stance. Yes. Some of it. It's absurd. I that understand that. Disgusting. I'll let him know. Thank you. I am embarrassed by the food. I just think that it can all be improved immensely. Martine, your vinaigrette is too vinegary, OK? You know, what is wrong with it? Because uh, we've been running this food for our many years. Martine, you heard me, right? I'm just letting you guys know what he's saying, OK? Thank you, this is going to be the seafood crepe. I'm going to set that in front of you here. It looks like a pie. Basically, they take the dish, they line it with the with the crepes, they fill it with the items, fold it back, and then they bake it. They're not like your typical French crepe. But why would you call it a crepe if it's not really any crepe? I think when the seafood crepe comes out, it just looks like a slurpy mess of black. Can I have a word with your uh, big brother? Is he here or not? He's unfortunately not. He will be here for dinner service tonight. OK. All right, okay. enjoy. Thank you. OK. Oh. That, that is hideous. It's, it's, it's hot in parts, like in the middle, but on the side there, stone cold. Want me to take it? Is the oven not working? No, the oven's working fine. You can't serve this shit and expect customers to flood through the door. I understand. How long has he been here? The Martine? Oh. Too long. You're not wrong there. <laughs> Martine lost his mojo around here many years ago. If you got someone who doesn't care about the food they're putting out, what do you have? Martine? He said it's hot in the middle, it's cold on the sides. He doesn't like it. Thank you. Oh, shit. How long has that been under the grill? Because it looks like it's been overcooked. It's piping hot. Is he microwaving that? I don't know. Girl? Yes. When normally something's that piping hot like that, it always tells you that it's been microwaved. Can you just check with the chef? OK, I'll check. Listen, thank you. OK, Martin. The quiche is warmed in the oven. Yeah. Hasn't seen the microwave. No. No. OK. Chef? Um, quiche? No microwave. I asked him if he put it in. He said no. Yeah, well, hold on a minute. I'm convinced this has been microwaved. Look at it. It's congealed. It's just like a, a, a rubber puck. 
Sometimes if he gets a little backed up, I, I've seen him do it before. Backed up? This is ridiculous. And let's go and uh, meet Martine. Please. It's a food issue right now. It starts from the kitchen. If we had somebody in here who cared about the food, we'd be so much better than we are now. Martin, I want you to meet <laughs> Chef Ramsay. Come around, please. You're the head chef. And everything I ate for lunch, you cooked. Yes, sir. Lunch was a disaster. The kitchen was rancid. Where did you heat that up? Was that in the microwave? Oven. No, I disagree. OK. We started on the microwave, and then uh, we put it on the oven, yes. So it did go in the microwave? That is right, yes. But you just told me it wasn't in the microwave. Why do you want to lie to me? Do you want, do you want me to lie to you? No, I'm not lying to you. I'm just telling you how do I do it. I'm, I'm so amazed that you're so laid back and, like, you don't give a shit. Talk to me. What do you want me to say? Why don't you care? Is it because you hate Celine? What does that have to do with cooking, sir? Because she said to me in the dining room, every time she tries to tell you something, bang, no, you jump will, down her. She will come and attack me. Attack yes. you? Yes, sir. Like saying that like, I'm in here for too long, it's time for me to go. If you're not prepared to change, yeah, I think she's right. OK. She's if it is time for me to go, I go. That was easy. Martin. After Chef Ramsay's miserable lunch. That is hideous. Lunch was a disaster. Chef Martin is not interested in hearing any criticism. If it is time for me to go, I go. And is ready to say goodbye to Lafrit. Martin! The blame is, is pulling on me. That's why I feel like I've been attacked. Martin, talk to me. She just don't understand how much of the stress and pressure I've been under that I'm burning out. I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm... Well, tell me. Do you know how much stress is when I know that I had to work with her? And I cannot work like that. I feel burned out. Celine, you know, is overpowered. Her, you know, authority is a boss, and there's nothing I can do. Even the own brother runs away from her. Like, you know, he doesn't want to deal with her. That's not right. Martin, now I've got your side of the story. Tonight, I want to see how you cook on a busy night service, OK? I'll see you later. Jeez. It's 30 minutes before dinner service, and Celine's brother, Alex, What's up, you guys? Hey, baby. arrives to begin his shift. Any updates? Gordon didn't make me cry. He was actually nice to me. Uh-huh. That's nice. Um, tonight will be fun. Chef Ramsay's going to be coming into this restaurant, changing things. So do I feel resistant? Definitely. Guys, look alive. Gordon's coming in now. Good evening. Hey. Well, hello. How are you? How are you doing, Chef Ramsay? Uh, Gordon. Alex. Alex, good to see you. So you're the big brother? Yeah. The Excellent. Big Little sis, big brother. Yeah. Uh, where's dad? Dad, uh, you know what? Hockey game tonight. He's what? He's gone to a hockey game. Wow, OK. So, um, two minutes with you, I'll catch up. So. All right. So why weren't you here at uh, lunchtime? Um, you're part owner of this business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you've never worked with your sister? Uh, no, we work separate nights. Absolutely. Right. Your father came to see me this morning oh, Okay. to tell me the conflict about you two not working together. Mm -hmm. So why is there so much conflict in here? I think the real conflict is the, the who wants to control and what, what you know, wants to control yeah. things. Are you pissed that she's come to run the business? She shouldn't even be here. I would rather her not be here. But it's your little sis. Wouldn't you be stronger and better with her? No. <sighs> Unfortunately not. So what's wrong with this restaurant in your mind? Mm. I don't see anything wrong with it, so... You don't see anything wrong? There's not a problem with this restaurant anywhere? Well, you know, I would change the bathrooms, I would change the different physical... Wow. Know. I'm not here to make you look stupid. Right. But you're sounding ridiculous. Let yeah. me ask you again. What the fuck's wrong with the restaurant? Um... In your eyes, there's nothing much wrong with it. Well, let's go. We'll, we'll see. OK. Well, thanks for the insight. Yeah, absolutely. Aye, aye, aye. If he's not going to be willing to accept this, 
and move on and take it as constructive criticism, it's not gonna work. All right, you guys, we ready? Hello there. While Andre is at the hockey game. Hi ladies, how are you? His two children, Celine and Alex, are working a rare night together, which is good because the restaurant is packed as word has spread that Chef Ramsay is at La Freite. I'm gonna have the chopped salad. And you're doing the lamb special? Okay, uh, necesito tres special, three working, three. I'm proud to be doing the cooking because I know what I'm doing. Excuse me, when you put things on the grill there, you don't season it, salt, pepper, on. Or... Yeah, it's already pre-seasoning. There's nothing on there. Right now? Yeah. What do you mean, right now? When were you going to season them, then? Yeah, well, right now. Right now. Right. OK, now. No seasoning on there. They now... should, I think they, don't they salt and pepper it when they put it on the grill? Yeah, well, they're not. They're not. Martin. Martin. Martine and I have never gotten along. He ignores me, I don't get answers. Alex can talk to Martine, but Martine does not like hearing anything from me. What is that? That's quiche, but it's been overcooked. You're kidding me. They don't listen to my opinions because it's me. Martine. Yeah, talk to me. Yeah, come round, please. I am talking to you. Yes, sir. Are you serious? OK, one more coming up. I just said to Martine, would you come round for a minute? He's serving that up. Yeah, I you don't walk away and ignore me, right? Alex has never taken confrontation well. You, know, you try and talk to him about something, and he just walks away. Are you joking around, or are you ignore me like this? You've just sort of given up. Have you given up? I have not given up. Absolutely not. We're well, walking around with a big bravado. It's wonderful. Uh -huh. Wow. This is the most disorganized restaurant I've ever seen. Martin, the chef, he's burnt out. Alex, well, he's so laid back, he's almost comatose. Andre, the owner who makes all the decisions, he's at a freaking hockey game. And the only one who cares, Celine, everybody ignores her. Unbelievable. Oh, by the way, the food sucks. Unreal. It's chewy and the sauce is just gooey. The lamb has got, like, no flavor. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Uh... They said the lamb has no flavor. Yep. OK. I know why it doesn't. We didn't salt and pepper it. They're not even seasoning it? Bring on the menu. Let Alex know what table it is, please. Alex. Well, yes. that's just coming back now. Thanks, Gordon. Thanks a lot. Uh, is this normal that he doesn't care? Mm-hmm. Celine, you know what? This is really, this is going to fuck up yeah. everything. You better get a grip. I can't get in the middle. And it's really sad, man. We've been running the restaurant for 38 years, and Things don't need to change. You're not real. That hurts. I love my brother, and I know he's better than what he's doing here right now. And I wish he would realize that everybody's here to help. Otherwise, uh, Alex will ruin me. Alex, look at me. Don't bully your sister. Bully me. I'm not bullying anybody, bro. Take a bit of responsibility. I am. Wow. What a fucking sponge. This is destroying us. What a shit attitude. It's only an hour into a shaky dinner service. This is going to fuck up everything. You better get a grip. And Chef Ramsay is frustrated with Alex's arrogance. Alex, I, I can't. I'm not going to get in the middle. As for Celine, she is clearly feeling the resentment from her brother. What a shit attitude. He thinks I did this to set him up. Stop crying. I'm trying so hard. Stop crying. The anger, I can see the anger. It's got to come out now. I understand. Yeah. You all think, have to do just, it. You have to work together. You have to get along. Sure. Every day is a fight. What am I supposed to do? I can't keep going. And I feel like I'm the only one fighting. So everybody looks at me like, I'm the bitch. I'm the one who's fighting. He's going to hate me even more for this. It's fine. It doesn't matter. I don't even think that anyone knows how much I care. I think the man's here to work it out with you. I just move on. I take a breath and push through it. That's it. There's nothing else I can do. Can you call your dad? Can, I, can, can you get your dad on the phone and I get him try. here? Would you? To get him here? Please, yeah. I'm ready to go. And tell him it's urgent. I will. And if he can't be bothered to get his ass over here to look at the mess that he's left, I'm out of here. Hi. 
Papa, you need to see this right now. A lot of food's coming back, you know, and just Alex is really just kind of just nonchalant about the whole thing, and it's really kind of pissing Gordon off. He, the same attitude he always takes, Papa. You know exactly, you know? OK, bye. Andre, you've got two seconds. Unbelievable. First of all, I'm slightly concerned you weren't even here. This is much, much worse than I could ever imagine. The worst thing of all is Alex's attitude. He has an attitude with you, or what? With me? He has an attitude with himself. Why is he so arrogant? It's a problem with him not accepting his sister. And I suffer, you know, a lot because of that. You know, they can't work together. It's a fire. He hates her uh, being anywhere near him in the restaurant whilst they're avoiding each other. Oh, yeah. And doing their separate and that's things. Bad. The kitchen is diving. It's sinking quicker than the Titanic. What's the solution? You can't leave it all to me. And I can't help you unless you start helping yourself. I'll see you in the morning. Bon nuit. After a long night of contemplating Lafrite's main issue. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Chef Ramsay is focused on bringing this family back together. I can't begin to fix this restaurant because there's so many personal problems here. Because nobody's opening up in front of each other, I want to try something. So I just want you to bear with me. Come with me two seconds. OK. Please. Take a seat. I want you to sit here, watch and listen. What's happening between Celine and Alex? Don't leave this space. I'm going to talk to Celine. How are you? Good, how are you? Well, good to see no, you. Yeah, uh, darling, take a seat. Let's just have a catch up. Okay. That was tough. Tough night last night. This restaurant has been running for 38 years. But the legacy is not going to continue with this kind of attitude. Yeah. The fragmented relationships between the families is incredible. You and Alex are so disconnected. How did it get to where it is today? Communication broke down. But underneath all that, deep down inside, do you think Alex resents you? I know Alex resents me. Tell me why. I think that he feels like he's the older brother and that he thought it, this was his. He thought that he was going to be able to run it the way he wanted, and his world came crashing down. Your relationship with your father, is it different to the relationship he has with Alex? Yeah. I think that he thinks that my dad, in the end, loves me more for some reason. Hi. Hi. How are you? Very good. Sit down. Good. We were just talking about you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why don't you just explain to Alex what you just explained to me? So we used to be very close. But I think that you're bitter towards a lot of things. You've got a lot of resentment. I don't know if it's only towards me, if it's towards other things. I didn't see you wanting to, to come here. It felt like he was going to give you the restaurant. I felt like, you know, I was losing mm -hmm. not only the passion and the pride, but the, the whole aspect of the restaurant. I still have that uneasy feeling like, do I belong? I put that wall up. Yes, I did. I can't do it. I've said it a million times. I can't do it alone. You know that. You know that. I'm not here to hurt you. No. I'm not. Well, I'm not here to step on you in any way. It was the first time that I got to look at you in the eyes and knowing that you're serious about it. The separation between my sister and I definitely wasn't working, and she made me, you know, realize we need to get unionized and we need to get together with each other and, and work together. I want to do it with you. you. I love her, and, and of course, we're going to work together. 
get I, here because I don't. I really thought you hated me. For I think she needs a hug. You're a big brother, for God's sake. <laughs> We've got to figure out just a way to talk again. We used to talk. We used to. <laughs> we used to have fun. <laughs> we, used to, we used to be best friends. This feels incredible. It's the most important thing for the restaurant that my brother and I to be family for for us to get along and for us to love each other. Let me leave you guys for a couple of minutes on your own. Thank Thanks. you. Okay, let me get some Thank fresh you. air. <laughs> the walls kind of came down, which is exactly what needed to happen for this family. She definitely showed me that we need to respect each other and that, that the respect for each other is what's going to make Lafrit succeed. If we can continue the legacy and continue the heartbeat of Lafrit, You've got an amazing son and daughter there that are desperate to get this place right. Huh? I hope so. That's one thing I really want, is all, us three to communicate or talk to each other. And, you know, it was hurting me. It's one step at a time. Yeah, that's it. Oh. I do. I was watching the old. I love you. Every time we were meeting, it was a wall. We were not talking to each other. Both of you are going to have to work with each other and listen. All three of us are in charge and we should sit down any time we have a decision. We need to go one way where everybody work together. We have seen a, a big step on the communication. I just open, cross my finger, and it's going to hold. After a breakthrough, emotional meeting between Alex and Celine. I love her, and, and of course we're gonna work together. Chef Ramsay is now ready to start implementing some changes. Gone is the 20-year-old dessert case that sat in the middle of the dining room. Jesus. And in its place, a contemporary crepe station. There you go. Real crepe. We could start doing some crepes. For tonight's menu, Chef Ramsay is replacing the soggy, heavy casserole crepes nah. with fresh, light, traditional crepes. Try that. It's excellent. Yeah? It's really good. It'll be our first table tonight. Nice. Best table in the house. Tonight, Alex will once again be in charge of the front of the house, but he will also be supervising the new crepe station and will be assisted by Gail. A little fresh dill on it. I'm not burning And then it. start to look. As for Celine, she will be in the kitchen, expediting and working alongside Chef Martin. Martin, you and I are going to really need to chat. I'm going to go completely off the specials. Oh, Sounds good. Do you smoke salmon crepe? Yeah. OK, is it all up? What is that? It's an omelet. You want it again? You tell me. Can he not cook an omelet? He should be able to. Can I get two new ones? Is anybody listening? Yes. I'm ready for the cordon bleu. Martin, try to communicate, please. Right here. What is that? Cordon bleu? Look at that, that fucking diaper sandwich. Andre, Martin, just stop and come round. Look at me. Look at me in the eyes. Look, I can't serve that. What's that? It shouldn't be like that. Like a fucking oil slick. Come on, guys. Papa, will you tell him? We don't drown it in there. Yeah, OK. He's going to have to learn. He has to let it drain. My nine-year-old daughter can cook that from that. Martin. Yes. I just want you to care. Yeah, I, I got that. Fuck it. I'm struggling. Where's the rest of our food? There's a little communication, trying to, trying to get everything fired. Who's making the crop show? While the kitchen struggles to push out food. Here you go. Thank you, Celine. Customers who ordered the crepes are thrilled with what they are receiving. It looks fabulous. Absolutely awesome. As for the old menu, it's disappointment. After disappointment. I'm so sorry. I, the artichoke, it's droopy. It doesn't have any flavor. Did you want anything else instead? Just, uh, no, no, we'll just go to the main course. Thank right. you so much. We've got uh, two hot artichokes coming back. No good. What? Salt? 
healthy or they said they're old and they don't like it. It's disheartening to see how much food was wasted tonight. I literally feel like we are, you know, back to square one. So we just get a little bit organized. So I want to see you step up to the plate, yeah? Not to me. Last night you were the only voice of reason I could actually understand. So they gotta yeah. listen. Got it. You understand? Communications of the essence, guys. How many minutes out are we on table 19? In the kitchen, Chef Martin continues to ignore Celine. Flip that baby. But in the dining room, Alex is a new man. Pretty darn good, huh? I'm getting my routine here. He's energetic and working hard to satisfy customers any way he can. Ham and cheese. Including making delicious, satisfying crepes. So yummy. Isn't it really like good. so good? I love it, Jill. It's good. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Let's be honest. We all know where the problem is. Celine? The head chef is not acting as the head chef and watching the food come out properly. And for every crap dish they send out, it's closing that door quicker. I have seen what you have seen. I have seen some stuff which I don't like. They need a leader. They need a better leader. You're right. They need that. Without that, they can't respect us. That's the engine room in there. If that's not firing on all cylinders, we're screwed. Understand what I've said. Absolutely. Tomorrow, I want each and every one of you to get ready for some major changes. Coming up. You'll be the first customers of the new LaFree. It's the biggest night in the last 30 years for LaFree. I need you to get a grip of the kitchen. Can this struggling kitchen staff. Marty, you need to talk. Finally get it together. None of my tables have the entrees. Or will they fail miserably and crush the dream of a family? They're walking out now. It hurts me so much to watch any table walk out of here without even getting served their food. With the family now all on the same page, Chef Ramsay moves ahead with a 40-year-old facelift of La Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are you ready to witness the new La Let's do it. Celine, ladies first. Off you go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Different. Wow, look at it. Now, where's my yellow? <laughs> Gone is the yellow. I can't believe how oh, white. Oh. How much does that blue pop out now? It's beautiful. How are the awnings gone? My bar American is gone. My bar can be a bar now. It's not smothered with a hideous awning. We've opened it up and it's got that modern French bistro vibe. We've got custom artwork on the wall. Look at it. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Customer, oh my gosh, I'm going to say, oh my gosh, I'm in the wrong restaurant or what? <laughs> you know, it's really a fantastic change. What do you think? What do you think? Can you see the It's awesome. I think it's just beautiful. <laughs> Look at the two of you. I think it's a new beginning, and we're turning that page from the 70s to the future. This restaurant needs to be cool, hip, and trendy to compete. So the menu needs to reflect that. Wow, well, get down. It's a classic, modern bistro take. Good. <laughs> OK, tonight we are relaunching La Frite. Yes. New restaurant, new menu. More importantly, a united family with a brand new attitude to put this restaurant on the map. You ready? Yes. It is one of the most important worries on my mind. Last night, there was a glaring problem. Your kitchen was nowhere near strong enough to relaunch this restaurant. So I made a few phone calls, and I found a secret weapon. Please welcome Chef Chewy. Come here, bud. Hello, good to everyone. see you. Hello. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> uh, are you good? Yeah, I'm happy to be here with you guys. OK. <laughs> this man has over 15 years of experience in French bistros. Whilst I'm here, I wanted him to be over every little detail in that kitchen, teaching your brigade this menu to make sure we haven't got issues. You got another voice. Thank you. OK, let's go. We've got some prep to do. Oh. <laughs> While Chef Chewy trains Martine and the kitchen staff, all the herbs a bacon and a lot lettuce. Chef Ramsay reveals the stunning new menu to the family. OK, the new menu at Le Frite. It's gorgeous. Beautiful. It smells good in here already. Let's have a little run through of the menu from the top. Something classic in French. Escargot, French nails, puff pastry croutons in there. Mince filet mignon. Yeah, classic garnish. Finish with a little quail egg on the top. 
the entrees, coq vin, braised chicken in red wine, Swiss chard and turnips, the jarret d'agneau, braised lamb shank, truffle polenta, and Brussels sprouts. A Frenchman's dream. It's good. I, I love it. It's gorgeous. I, I'm just flabbergasted. I mean, it's beautiful. This is how it should be. This is exciting. It's a, a great menu, and, you know, I can't wait to see excellent food coming out of the kitchen. Oh, my God. I mean, they're all amazing. It's good. That's all, <laughs> That's all I know. After almost 40 years without a change, it's relaunch night at Lafrite. How are you? You'll be the first customers of the new Lafrite. And time for Chef Martine to be tested. OK, great. You all set? Yeah. Good. Chef Chewy will be there to support him and oversee the crepe station. See you for you. On, boss. The old Lafrite is gone. Let's go. They're a little nervous because after 20 years cooking the same food almost every day, you know, the new menu is totally different. What do we think? I have the onion soup to start, the uh, uh, braised lamb shank. I'll have the tuna de squad salad with the uh, mushroom gravy. Martin, order in. Escargot table two, ready to go. It's 30 minutes into service. All right, soup du jour. And appetizers are not only leaving the kitchen quickly. And our car is awesome. They are a hit with customers. That is great. But back in the kitchen. Martin, two soup du jours and a cordon bleu crepe. Martin. Trouble is brewing as a frustrated Celine. How's my cordon bleu crepe? tries to get answers from Martine. Martine! Communicate, please. Martine! Martine! I hear you, sir. Talk to me. I need you to start giving an answer to Celine. You need to talk. While an organized Celine tries to expedite, Martine continues to ignore. It's a bit, an hour and a half, two hours. And almost nothing is leaving the kitchen. You can't have our dinner in five minutes. We'd like a bill. OK. And we'll leave. Absolutely. So, I'll no. bring it over right now. Do we have table three? It's there. If they're not, doing it they're right now. Out. They're okay. doing it right now? Uh-huh. Perfect. How long for this do you think? Because otherwise, they said they will cancel it. About five more minutes. Five more minutes. Oh, uh, yeah. Five minutes? I have five tables, all waiting an hour and a half for their entrees. and. I cannot do anything. I am screaming at them right now. Right, it's too late. We're leaving. Don't worry about 20. They're walking out now. 20's walking out now. And basically, it hurts me so much to watch any table walk out of here without even getting served their food. It's completely out of control. Fucking serious, man. It's relaunch night at Lafrite. And after a 90-minute wait, I am screaming at them right now. Uh, it's too late. We're leaving. The first table has walked out. Wow. It's unbelievable. Don't worry about 20. They're walking out now. Fucking serious, man. What's wrong? None of my tables have their fucking entrees. One of them walked out. They're done. Oh, fucking hell. Servers in the dining room. Everybody else, shut the fuck up for 30 seconds. This is really important. Celine, I need you to get a grip of the kitchen. I need you to delegate, please. I want take Chewy control. to take control, sure. please. Tell him that, yeah? Chewy, please take control of the kitchen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Quattro crepes, to all Let's go, guys. We should be able to do this. Come on. How's table eight working? I need, like, four or five minutes for that. Yep, perfect. What I liked about Chef Chewy is when I said something to him, he would acknowledge me and say, OK. And that's how it should be. OK. That's the poulet. Here, this. Poulet champignon. Yay! All right. With Celine and Chef Chewy now working in complete harmony. We're going to table seven, please. Thank you. Thank you. Entrees are flying out of the kitchen. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. And the Freaks relaunch. Melt in your mouth. It's worth the wait. Finishes on a positive note. I have no other table, huh? I'm finished. Take a break. Thank you, guys. Great job, guys. Thank you. Chingon. Gracias, everyone. Bye. Right, um, first of all, let me make something really clear. You will not be able to move forward unless you make major changes in that kitchen. I don't know what would happen to this restaurant tonight if Chef Chewy wasn't there, let me tell you that. But Chef Chewy can't do it alone. It's true. The family's united. Now, you, as a family, have to fix the kitchen. Yeah. Gordon made us realize that we need to work together on making changes, you know, building a team that's going to continue getting this restaurant to, to the next level. And Andre, when you first came to me, you were worried about these two. I want them together. They can work together, and they, they proved it. Not to me, but to you. Ooh. They are 
fine. And they just want to make you proud. I'm proud of them. This has been a really, really incredible experience. It's great to have made it through and to made it through a stronger person and a stronger family and, and a stronger restaurant as a whole. Thank you. Take care. Hey, take care. It was you were great. No more crepe in a casserole. No. <laughs> Promise. Thank you so much. Good night. This week, we definitely, definitely fixed the family, but I'm not too sure we actually fixed the restaurant. We've given them all the tools, but it's up to them to make the tough decisions. Sacre bleu. In the days that followed, Chef Chewy was brought in full time as the new executive chef. Just put it out, put it out. Cordon bleu crepe, thank you very much, Chewy. And is continuing to build a strong team in the kitchen. It's okay. There you go, crispy. Bon appetit. Enjoy. Alex and Celine are working hard to continue the family legacy. So I need the frise salad and the poulet pomme. Okay. But more importantly, they are doing it together. Bye, Selena. Bye. Bye. See you soon.